Hey folks, welcome to Market Technical Analysis by InTheMoneyStocks.com, your leader in pure technical analysis, avoiding all that Wall Street hype. Today, Friday, June 20th, 2008. Well, as we get into today's video, folks, we're going to talk about the dramatic decline on the last day of options expiration week as options were exercised or expired worthless on this Friday. And this was a dramatic reversal from yesterday's action. And this is what we talk about when we talk about that volatility of options expiration week. And this is price precisely why we had said, even though we thought we had a time turn date yesterday, you got to wait till after options X Friday before you take a stab at the markets. And that was an unbelievable, and I'm glad that we had made that clear yesterday, because on a reversal like this, it just, un it just underscores that volatility issue in the markets on options expiration week. All right, and we saw a nice move yesterday up to the upside uh, and just an opposite dramatic push down today as the Dow was down 220 points, the uh, NASDAQ down 56, and the S&P was down 25 points on the day. Now, to touch base on this, remember we had talked about that key support line on the S&P of uh, 1329. Now, the S&P closed today at 1317, almost 1318, give or take a couple uh, fractions there. But the key here now, folks, is that we have to look for confirmation of this move. Uh, we don't necessarily believe anything of this options X weeks, and that's precisely why we had said in yesterday's video, uh, wait till Monday before we assume any of a upside bounce bias in this market. And we're actually going to stay with that until we see confirmation in this market. The time date is generally within a couple days of being correct on our almost all our calls in the past so we're going to still give it the benefit of the doubt until we see confirmation should we go down on Monday then that negates the time value of this call and you may see a drop on the S&P to the next major support line of 1298 all right 1298 being the next major support there's small support lines all the way around but Overall, the 1298 marker will be the most dramatic, the largest support in the near range of this market. So again, we're going to have to wait to see if we get confirmation of the move today on Monday, or was it just one of the flukes of the craziness of options expiration week? And again, as we always talk about, the charts will tell us each day. Today we saw the move down to gating uh, the 29 level, but if we should reverse on Monday right back above that 29, well, it's right back in play as long as we don't break lower on Monday. Should we break lower, then the 1298 level becomes the next mega support area that we'll be looking for for a possibility of support and a dramatic support at that. So we're going to get into the charts, but again, I just a great um, you know, I great behind the the analysis on yesterday of understanding options expiration week and it's just a good thing that we saw that and knew that it was so key in that regard, folks, to wait on that call until after uh, Friday's action because Friday's action was a major reversal from yesterday on decent volume. You always have big volume on options expiration day, so that's another part of it as well, folks. So we'll keep an eye on that. But I'll play the video from yesterday where we talked about that here. Uh, based on that, however, we're still not going to talk about a possible bounce scenario until after options X, and that's a conservative nature of us. All right, we're conservative on that side, um, and we know how crazy options X is. And tomorrow is options expiration Friday. So until we get through tomorrow, it could be whips whippy. But nonetheless, today was a good start in what we saw. All right, so there you guys see what we're talking about there in being cautious in yesterday's video. And that's just precisely why you had to be cautious going into the options expiration Friday. We all know how they act from all the videos we've done. We've talked about it multiple times. Uh, they're going to whipsaw you out, and they did that exactly yesterday and today. But again, we're going to wait to see. And we'll talk about the levels and the charts now. But first, let's start with the intraday uh, movement on the ES, which was just wave after wave of selling pressure. And you guys can see it. It's almost exactly like an ocean here. And imagine a wave coming in and then a little the, the, the tide pulling out and another wave coming over. And you can see that here, wave, pausing, wave, pause, wave down and so forth and a little bit of a pause into the close and that's really all you can say about it you can you know just looking at this chart you can see how the 20 moving average was with major resistance all day on the ES and again we're looking at the e-mini contract here but you can see that right you can see the 20 which is the yellow line here every time it got around that level it sold off got around it here again sold off and got around it here and stalled out into the close so really the 20 moving average was strong enough to hold all day it looks like as we couldn't break above it in any significant fashion 
Now, let's take a look at some of the uh, daily charts, and really, this is where we get into some interesting stuff, because in all fairness, over the last week or so, the markets have taken a pretty you know, substantial move, especially since the high over here, and this is going back now a few weeks, obviously, three to four weeks, going back to, uh, yeah, right here on this topping out area, where we had that double top area right here in the markets, and if you look at this now, I mean, it's a dramatic fall. You actually had the Dow backing back under 12,000 as of the close today, around 11, 8 and change. And we're really only, you know, four or 500 points, I believe, above the area we were on the Bear Stearns Day, you know, where we were on the Bear Stearns back in March. So it's going to be very interesting to see if there's any major movements here. You know, to me, it's tough. You know, I'll give you guys my gut. My gut says we'll have a, some sort of bounce coming in very soon because... The bearish sentiment out there is coming in very strong. You had Merrill Lynch today being coming, you know, rumors of Merrill Lynch reporting a, a huge loss, and again, uh, a bigger loss than Wall Street expected, coming out and saying they're going to have to take more write downs. The financials just couldn't get a bid again uh, today, and we have a m possible near term breakdown on the, on the triple bottom. But again, until we see that confirmed, we have to be cautious on assuming it, because too many times in my history of trading, I've seen them push it one way and, and make everyone think it's breaking and then the next day they spike it back up. So it could go either way, and we're going to have to just bear with it on here and because we're at such a pivotal point. I mean, this is, this is I don't think people realize how pivotal this is. Uh, this is on the borderline of either a possible bounce reversal and, and faking everyone out to the downside, or they could also be on the, on the uh, precipice of a major breakdown on many, many charts here. So we'll have to see again, as I said, but the 1329 line on the S&P 500, the S&P here, was closed below, and that has to be watched now for a possible move to 1398 if we confirm it on Monday. Um, but again, not only was the financials having some more constant bad news, but really um, the oil issue, there's, there was more talk about Israel and, and Iran here and what's going on with some, some drills um, with uh, Air Force fighters over there and, and stuff like that flying missions that are the same length as it would take to go to Iran and, and all this junk. So that spiked up oil in the USO. While the USO was up today, it gapped up much higher here, and it really sold off most of the day. And you can see this here. I can actually draw trend lines all the way down. So what you're seeing here is even on that, remember uh, two Fridays ago, was it two Fridays ago or so, there was that same type, sort of news out of the Middle East, and oil was up $10.5 that day. Well, today... It gapped up on that type of speculation, also on speculation that the they raised Chinese oil, the Chinese government raised the cost of, uh, of fuel over there by about 18 17%, and at first that dropped it yesterday, but now today analysts were on CNBC and all the media outlets just saying, no, nah, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. When we hear that, it usually means that it's going to go the opposite way of all the analysts, uh, but again... You have to respect oil, and oil has been a zombie. We call it a zombie, a, a Dracula, if you will, because it just never dies. It always rises again. It, you know, Until it gets that stick through the heart, it's not going down, obviously. So while we do happen to favor that it, there are going to be some downside on oil, it obviously doesn't look like it, and, and we're pretty much going out on the limb here and saying this. Everyone else is against us saying that oil is going to go up higher. We're taking a stab and saying, you know what, we'll go with our conviction here and what we see on the charts and base it off of that. Now, one thing I do want to show, I want to show the 180-minute chart here um, because you can see a channel we're in on oil. So hang on, let me switch over to that. Okay, this is in, usually we look at the 60-minute, but be able, to be able to show this to you guys on such a small screen area here, I have to go to the 180-minute. And I want to show you guys this in, uh, in key uh, analytics terms here. And what I want to show you guys is the channel. And this is the lines that I drew in before. I can take those out from when I had it on the 10-minute. But look at the channel that we're in on oil and this is what it's all going to come down to guys all right you have a major gap area right here you have multiple gaps in here but nonetheless look at this channel we're trading in on oil all right which way is it going to break which way is it going to break we favor the downside everyone else seems to favor the upside uh, we're going to know soon enough the whole idea here from us our point is, standpoint is that what else can you know there are certain events that will trigger a spike in oil a hurricane some issues in the Middle East that are going to be even more dramatic than what's, what's, what's been going on. But other than that, it, there's not many events that are going to cause a major spike up. You know, we had the news today, and really oil gapped up and sold off. It still closed up higher, you know, up, up 2 to $3 today on oil, but it was up higher during the day. And so there, you have to look at it from a psychological standpoint. Everyone's in this price, everyone has built in some very, very dramatic news, you know, except for a hurricane or, or some, some geopolitical event. 
and unless that comes to fruition, what's going to push continue to push up oil here in the near term? So keep an eye on that, guys. You know, we could be off here on this one, but we still see oil coming in. There's a big gap that needs to be filled eventually here once this area is breached, and that should happen very quickly once it's breached, we think. So keep an eye on that. Now let's go to the SPY on the daily chart and talk a little bit about this in the last few minutes of this video. Look at the support line here that was hit today on the drop. All right, this took out the 1329 to the next small support line, and you can see that line right there getting taken out. This was the 1329 line. All right, and now you're talking about some next support areas coming in right around here and at the lows over here. So watch this area coming in here as being some little bit of support, which is basically the low of the day today, maybe a little lower tick. And at that point, should we break lower and confirm the move? Should we break this line here on uh, Monday? Then you want to look for that 1299, 1298 on the S&P. Again, we're going to look to find out, do we get confirmation on this or do we push back up? It's going to be a very interesting week next week, guys. We'll talk to you next Monday. Take care.